This is Nigeria Today on TVC News. Thanks for joining us. A federal high court in Abuja has granted the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency's application to review facts presented on the two defendants who have pleaded guilty in the ongoing trial of suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police Abba Kiari and others in an alleged cocaine deal. Justice Eme Kanwite, in a ruling, dismissed the objection raised by counsel to Mr. Kiari and his co-defendant that granting the request might jeopardize their own case. Judiciary correspondent Celestine Area reports. Justice Emeka Awaiti ruled on whether revealing facts presented on the sixth and seventh defendant who pleaded guilty would jeopardize the case of the defendants. He agreed with the NDLEA and counsel to both defendants that Mr. Kiari and other police officers had not given sufficient evidence that their case would be prejudiced if the court grants the request. He held that the objection lacked merit and ordered the NDLA to commence the review of facts on the sixth and seventh defendant. Justice Uwete aligned with the arguments that keeping the two guilty defendants in prison during the length of the trial would infringe on their right to fair hearing, going by Section 36 of Section 4 of the Constitution. Justice Uwete subsequently adjourned the 26th of May. Counsel to Mr. Kiari Kanwa Gabi, senior advocate of Nigeria, had objected to the prosecuting lawyer's request. He said should the court convict and impose a sentence on the defendant, it would jeopardize the case of Kiari and the other four defendants. Uh, further application for bail for the rest of the defendant, apart from the fifth, uh, the fifth and sixth, sixth and seventh rather, defendants. So for the 26th of May, we should be coming back here for review of facts, as well as uh, taking the bail application for the first, second, fourth, and fifth defendants. At the last adjourned day, Justice Emeka Wete had refused the bail application of Mr. Kieri and his co accused, stating that the prosecution has placed sufficient evidence before the court that warranted refusal of the bail application of the senior police officers. Celestina Iria, TVC News, Abuja. Staying with court matters, a Kwaibom State High Court sitting in Uyo has dismissed the no-case submission filed by Ignatius Uduk, who is standing trial over alleged electoral fraud in the 2019 general elections. The presiding judge, Justice Basin Kanang, said Ignatius Uduk, a professor of physical and health education, University of Uyo, and coalition and returning officer for ECN Udim S State Constituency Elections, has a case to answer. Speaking with journalists shortly after the ruling, lead counsel to the Independent National Electoral Commission, Clement Onwenuno, described the ruling as wonderful, well-researched, and incisive. He said it would have been a miscarriage of justice for the court to have held that the accused who had issued contradictory document had no case to answer. It was... A wonderful ruling, well researched, highly incisive. It covers everything. And uh, as you all had, the preliminary objection of the accused was dismissed. The notice of the no case submission they made was also dismissed uh, because, as you all saw, in the course of the proceedings, we called five witnesses and tendered avalanche of documents showing the connection of the accused person to the crimes charged. Oh, certainly, the options available to me is an appeal. I did not have to raise that before my Lord because I haven't made up my mind on that yet. When I have access to the judgment, I'll sleep over the judgment with my team, you know, confer with my, I have even explained that judgment to my client and make these options available to him. And then I'll know what. Away from the court, the industrial action embarked upon by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has entered its third month and organized labor has threatened to hold a three-day strike and a national protest if the government continues to ignore the demands of the workers. They are also warming up for a one-day protest after its 21-day ultimatum to the government on ASA strike. TVC News correspondent Joki Adisa reports. Nigerian workers will on Sunday join their counterparts the world over to commemorate this year's International Day for Workers. 
popularly called May Day. For workers in Nigeria, the prevailing state of insecurity and economic uncertainties cannot erode the essence of the day. All that we have gotten was not given to us by any government. All that we have gotten as workers around the world was gotten through collective struggle, through the deployment of workers' power. As the countdown to this year's May Day celebration begins, the Nigeria Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress hold this rally to sensitize the citizens. From the headquarters of the NLC, workers marched through the city centre, arriving at the Federal Secretariat. The issues are multiple, from insecurity, worsening state of education, to rising inflation, and the Labour leaders take the political leaders seriously to task. Labour decries the shutdown of public universities. It describes the IPPIS as a conduit pipe for corruption. In between also this 21-day notice, there will be a one-day national protest to speak centrally on the issue of the centrality of education. After the expiration of the 21 days, if nothing happens, that there will be a three-day national strike by all our structures across the length and breadth of this country. The government must stand up to do everything possible to ease these pains, to do everything possible to ease these difficulties that is biting the Nigerian workers. In a moment of reflection, workers appeal to those in position of authority to right the wrongs. And the crisis we are having is about mismanagement of resources, where the resources of the nation is in the hand of a very few powerful people. I can say that government has failed us. But this is just an opportunity for, for us to still let government know that we are here. The two labor centers in Nigeria insist that rather than agonize, Nigerian workers will organize themselves and have a critical say in who and who mounts elective seats come the forthcoming general election. Joke Edsa, TBC News, Abuja. Now to the war against human trafficking. The National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, says more than 20,000 Nigerian women and young girls are still trapped in Mali in forced prostitution and labor and are willing to come home. The Director General revealed this at the 25th National Stakeholders Consultative Forum on Human Trafficking in Abuja. She stated that the federal government is committed to ending this scourge and has unveiled a national action plan and policy document to achieve this. Moyo Thomas reports. The Vice President of Nigeria has launched three policy documents. These policies will address gaps that have made it difficult to end trafficking in persons in Nigeria. NAPTI by the event reveals that a total of 17,636 victims of human trafficking have so far been rescued, with about 394 repatriated in 2022. The agency also says it has recorded 509 convictions since its establishment, 13 of which were done this year and 261 currently ongoing. The vice president, who was represented at the world attended event, especially by heads of agencies and the diplomatic community, says the scourge is further encouraged by economic downturn, but government social investment programs can help address this. To prevent human trafficking, we need to address poverty, underdevelopment, and a lack of equal opportunity, which means we have to invest more in people, especially the young and the disadvantaged. It is no longer news that human trafficking is the second largest criminal industry across the globe, and our dear country, unfortunately, is rated as a country of origin, transit, and destination for that crime. Unfortunately, human trafficking cons constitutes a serious threat to human national and international security. The DG of NAPTIP assures of efforts at eliminating trafficking in persons. NAPTIP has concluded partnership with Facebook and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in the United States to set up Amber Alerts Nigeria, where Facebook sends alerts to targeted Facebook community to help find missing children in Nigeria on time 
real time. Forcibly displaced persons and people with disabilities have also been identified as easy targets and victims of this dastardly act. These three documents launched today will not only help in combating the scourge of trafficking, but also in prosecuting offenders across the country if adequately implemented. Moya Thomas, TVC News, Abuja. Let's turn attention to Yobe State, where operatives of the State Police Command have shut down the Mami Market situated at Area Command in Dematuru over fear that terrorists may target the place with explosive devices. According to the command's public relations officer, Dungus Abdul Karim, the measure was taken to avert being caught unawares by the sect. Michael Oshoma has details in this report. Last week, Boko Haram fighters claimed responsibility for attacks on drinking joints in Gaidam and Geshwa towns, leaving at least six persons dead in both attacks. This particular drinking spot, popularly known as Area Command, used to be crowded by alcohol seekers, but now it's completely deserted due to its closure by security operatives. It's a proactive measure taken by the command because of the uh, resurgence of uh, uh, bomb attacks in the state. So we are trying to uh, ensure security of life and property. And this is just a temporary uh, step toward ensuring that life and property has been protected within the vicinity of the police. And you know, today uh, in insurgency areas, security operatives are the priority target of uh, those terror groups. Marketers who are counting their losses are appealing to relevant authorities and the government to do the needful to reopen their shops. You see, this is a matter of uh, investigation. And whenever you are investigating any uh, scenario or incident, then uh, uh, you cannot just predict or you cannot just preempt a particular date or time for completion. But I assure you that very soon we will see ways on how to reopen that place. Michael Ushoma, TVC News, the Maturi of States. You are watching Nigeria Today. The federal government's homegrown school feeding program has catered for more than 9 million pupils with about 100,000 food vendors creating sundry employment within the school ecosystem. This was the submission of the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development as the distribution and handover of new school feeding utensils to beneficiaries in Enugu State. Bamidili Ajayi reports. With about 10.5 million out-of-school children, the United Nations Children Education Fund UNICEF 2022 report rates Nigeria highest in the world. It identifies issues of poor funding, poverty, geographical displacement or emergency, insecurity as factors affecting children enrollment in schools. In an effort to mitigate the challenges, federal government launched home growth school feeding program among other measures to address poverty and improve children enrollment in schools in the country. The scheme is designed to encourage parents to get their children participate in the hygienically prepared with high nutritional value school feeding program. Since the introduction of the scheme in Enugu State, it has recorded successes that most students are eager to be in school with a guarantee of at least a meal per day. There was a child that told me, say, Mommy, I say, he said, do you know, I, do, I don't eat in the morning before coming to school. That God will bless us. I say, it will bless the governor. It will bless the president. At this distribution, an handover of crested school feeding place to 17 educational secretaries in Enugu State. Cooks and school vendors are urged to improve on the services rendered to the pupils. His Excellency the Governor is even more passionate to ensure that all the purpose in the states are given this one meal per school day. Seems to be one of the best programs in the social investment program because it is the program that touches the grassroots. 
feeding program bringing about improvement in our school enrollment. For the minister who spoke on the successes of the federal government's social intervention program, promises to continue delivering quality service that will better the lot of the people. The plans of our ministry that seeks to ensure that the target people have the best experience of hygiene and safety during their consumption of those free meals. Federal government is responsible for the release of funds, guidelines, policies, monitoring, and the state carries out the day-to-day -day implementation, including procurement of food items, selection of cooks and vendors who prepare the meal for the pupils. Pamidele Ajayi, TVC News, Enugun. Talking health now, Nigeria has one of the highest cancer mortality rates in the world, with approximately four out of five cases resulting in death, but that's according to the Global Cancer Observatory. Now, the University of Ibadan Alumni Association is building a two billion naira diagnostic center to enhance early detection and treatment. A delegation of the body paid a courtesy visit to TVC Communications to encourage partnership in a bid to save more lives. Report. Cancer remains a dreaded affliction and its risk increasing with age. With over 100,000 new cases every year, many Nigerians with friendly pockets might prefer to source for medical help outside the country, but those who do not have a choice seek for it here, albeit non existent. With the clamor for better health care, the University of Ibado Alumni Association is building a cancer and research diagnostic center to allow access to better treatment of the disease. Signs all over the place. It's even on the increase. But you see, according to physicians, if these things are diagnosed early, a lot of people will have been saved. So there is this urgent need for diagnosis. With limited cancer and diagnostic centers in Nigeria, they say this would help to ameliorate the sufferings and ease the burdens of many. We believe that it will help Nigeria um, by trying to set up this cancer diagnostic center where Nigerians from all walks of life, no matter where you're from. We do know that lots and lots of persons die through, not necessarily deformed, but through early diagnostic. TVC Communications has always been at the forefront of giving back to the society. And this is one out of many projects to ensure lives are touched. As long as it is about affecting life, getting people together to you know, assist in actual development of the, the university, we will do our best. Nigeria's progress towards universal health care may be slow, but this project is bent on achieving affordable critical health service in the country and reduce medical tourism. In Nyolua, Pokola, TVC News, Lagos. As the matters, Lagos State Government says a permanent solution to the incessant floods on Lagos Island is underway. This comes just as residents of Idumagbo and environs seek urgent intervention after being forced to adapt to a situation caused by rising sea levels. Esther Mokwariola reports. This is not a river or lagoon but a low-lying community on Lagos Island submerged by flood. The situation here has made life unbearable for residents, traders and shop owners at Oroyini, Ujogiwa, Idugara and Jankara. Behind me you can see the level of stagnation in this market and traders here find it increasingly difficult to make sales because customers aren't forthcoming. They are asking the government to quickly come to their aid. Many here have devised means to stay above the water or simply get through it, even as their schools, streets and mosques have been taken over by the floods. They tell me they have spent lots of money to clear the drains, but nothing changed, only got worse with time. 
We have a Saleko Grammar School here that's covered. They pass through this particular place. We have Kingadu. We have St. Patrick here. You understand? Like four schools that surround this particular place. So if rain fall, nobody will be able to access this particular area again. And this thing makes us lose many customers. Most of our customers live here, go to Alaba and buy. If you can assess your business area, is it your customers who assess the business area? So if this can be like this in April, you can imagine what it will be in July. Not too far from one of the markets in the vicinity is a canal meant to collect wastewater into the lagoon. But the low-lying nature of this area makes it difficult for water to get into the drainage channel. There was a mild drama between some traders and local government officials. The officials were accused of not making the environmental challenge any better despite collecting levies meant for sanitation. But the residents claim the source of their problem is from an ongoing construction at Ilubiri Estate, where an embankment has been constructed, preventing free flow of water into the lagoon. And at the site, we see some pipes at the embankment, which are being powered by a diesel generator pumping water from the canal into the lagoon. A Lagos state official here tells me the embankment is to prevent an ocean surge from the lagoon into the mainland due to recent rise in sea levels. Before, we do experience a lot of water concentration, but immediately we apply the skills and the knowledge of uh, casting here the water inflow to the community is lesser. In the meantime, the state authorities say a permanent solution over the incessant flood is underway, as well as a reconstruction of the drainage outlets. So what we are doing presently that we saw at Ilubrini is temporary measure that is meant to alleviate the suffering. So we have four pumps that is running now, though that is not the capacity that is required. The capacity is about 3,000 cubic meter per second. Within the next six months, you have it running. While residents anxiously wait on the government to keep its promise, even as the rainy season continues to gather momentum, it will take a lot more than patience if things are to turn around for the better. Esther Mapariola, TVC News, Lagos. That is Nigeria Today. Thank you very much for staying with us. Do join us at 10 for more updates.